Can't for my wins. I need my hands. This life is real. And they pretend. Game of the pins. I get it in. I get it in. I get it in. Can't for my wins. I need my hands. This life is real. Can't play pretend. Game of the pins. I get it in. I get it in. I get it in. I'm on my job, I get it done, but you should know that Shine like a sun, a 101, you should know that I get the front and in the back, you should know that No need to stun, it's never cap, you should know that All I know, ten toes, never fold Bay and roll, on the go Ice hole, ice hole, ice hole Can't for my wins, I need my hands This life is real, can't play pretend Ain't most of the I get it in, I get it in Welcome, my name is Captain Chaos and this is Pirate Boxing. Today we have a special guest. We have a military veteran who transitioned from the military life combat into boxing. And without further ado, I want to introduce to you none other than Sean Killer Cam Cameron. Wow. <laughs> I'm impressed, bro. That was amazing. That was dope. Hey, listen, listen, listen. Only the best for the best, man. I want to put bro, it out there. It. Listen, listen. You are the closest thing to Superman. I want you to uh, understand one thing. I want you to understand oh, one thing. We are mere mortals. You are the true <laughs> gladiator. Come on, man. That's right. Yeah, come on, man. That's right. That, that was that was that was good. I wow. Do you I think you deserve words. it? I, I didn't expect that. I, I, <laughs> you don't deserve anything less. You don't deserve Bro, anything. I don't less. even. Know, I don't. I don't even know what else to say. Like that was, wow. My brother, we 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 got, we got work to do. Are you ready? Ah oh, man, let's do it. All right, now, quick question: Who would you like the public to donate on your behalf? Oh, definitely. Um, Wounded Warriors, man. I've always, I mean, over over the years, you know. I've always like donated to or like help. I had a program in Gleason's at one one point where I was um training the uh like disabled vets, disabled uh like um veterans. Uh, we had that going for a while before we moved, and then it kind of fizzled out. But I mean, definitely w wounded warriors, man. I mean, especially since I'm a veteran, so it only made sense, you know. Right, right, right. So you know what? We're gonna we're gonna dive right into it, man. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about everything. And you know, um, let's get into the early life. Yes, sir. What part of Brooklyn are you from? Uh, East Flatbush and Canarsie. Like, I mean, they're they're relatively close. You know what I mean? See, my family, uh, they're West Indian, Jamaican, and stuff like that. So that that whole area is is a mixture of like uh, Caribbean folks. You know what I'm saying? Um, Trinidadians, Haitians, the Dominicans, J Jamaicans, everybody's like all in one. You know? So like. East Flatbush, and then I moved down to Canarsie, but it's it's roughly like the the same neighborhood, the same same setup. You know what I mean? How was same it growing up? People and shit. How was it growing up in Brooklyn? I thought it was cool. Um, it's so funny, man. Like to me personally, I thought it was you know your typical because I'm what I'm used to. But like when you go to like different places, like oh, it's it's not like home. It was you know everybody knew each other and stuff. You know what I mean? Um, uh, a neighborhood of immigrants, so everybody was just, just like hardworking people, just trying to make a buck and, and get ahead. You know what I'm saying? Right, my right, pops, right. he was never home. My friends' parents, they were never home. Most times, we, you know, we'd go out and and we'd just be home by ourselves or go to the playground and shit like that. But um, for the most part, that's just like the the structure of like the neighborhood. Everybody just out immigrants. We're out there just trying to trying to make a living and trying to. You know what happened? Oh, yeah. I, I thought it cut out for a second. Nah, never that. We're giving you, we're giving you the spotlight, my brother. Oh, I'm, your, sorry. I'm sorry. Your best, your best childhood moments. Ah, uh, man. Uh, there was so many. Really, it was just hanging out. It was, it was mainly hanging out. Cause we never really, uh, bro. I was poor, so I ne I couldn't afford nothing. So it was mainly hanging out, being in the, in the playground, playing uh, basketball and shit, just hanging out, uh, taking the train, hopping the <laughs> hopping the train, getting caught up. Um, 
like I left the house quick though. By like by like seventeen, um, you know, I didn't want to stay home, so I went down to the, my my pops actually brought me down to Church Avenue and the um, the recruiting station, and and signed me up for the military. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I think like if you're younger than eighteen or or whatever. Um, your parents had to like bring you down or escort you or something like that. They got to turn you over. And it was nothing else for me to do. I was, it was either that or just keep hanging around and getting in trouble or doing, you know, smoking weed or something like that. So I was out. I was out relatively early, bro. In the nineties, uh, ninety nine, actually, um, I was gone. And never came back. You know what I'm saying? Well, just so you know that here in uh, you know Captain Chaos Pirate Boxing, we are drug free. But I just want you to know that <laughs> that we are we are definitely smoking up in here. You know what I'm saying? We, we, yeah, we, yeah. We, we, but I mean, you're gonna you're gonna see the smoke, man. It's coming. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we 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 smoking. It's it's because uh, I I like now or like I, it's never really been my thing. But as kids, you you know you try stuff. Obviously, it, it wasn't my thing. Smoke uh smoking or drinking. Right, you know what I'm saying, but uh, obviously you experiment as a ch as a child, like oh he's smoking a cigarette or something that you would try, but it it wasn't my thing, you know what I'm saying. But that that's basically what, like my friends were doing, you know what I'm saying. And right, of right, course, right, If right. you're hanging out with them, you're gonna you know guilty by association and shit. Right, right. So at what age did you say you joined the military? Ah, uh, I was seventeen. Um, you were seven seventeen. Yeah, I, well, I was about to be uh seventeen, ninety nine, um October. My pop signed me over, so. I was I was at the house before eighteen. I'll tell you that. So now, did you go in there willingly, or it was just one of those things you didn't have an option? Uh, it was a little bit of both, because obviously I didn't want to be home, and my pops, he really like I I wanted to do it, but at the same time, like we couldn't afford nothing, and then I don't I don't really have much of an option, and of course, like most of my friends, they were getting locked up, bro. They were kids. So you, you know you're getting arrested, and then before you know it, you know you you. At, after a while, it was gonna be like, all right, you're gonna end up on Rikers or something, doing dumb shit. So I was like, all right, let me get out of here, bro. Let me. Plus, I didn't want to be home, you know, following rules and shit. I wanted to set my own my own rules, and I figured I'd just get some freedom, some independence, you know. So right, I was right. just out. I just I just wanted to be out as a teen. I just wanted to be out to get my own money and stuff, man. And that was it. Gone. Well, you know what? Um, at this day and age, you know, most kids don't have, you know, the mindset that uh, you know you had at that time. And you know what? Um, I guess I guess you and your dad have a have a ha had a great relationship. <laughs> yeah. I don't. You see uh, the smoke? You see the smoke? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know yeah what I'm I, know, I told you. Hey, we are drug free. <laughs> we are drug free. You know what I'm saying? But we smoking. <laughs> yeah. It was. Yeah. It was. You know. <laughs> it was. Uh, I just wanted to, you know, do my own thing, man. I always so, yeah. wanted. I, I've always been that guy. Like, let me just do do my own shit. Let, right, right. Send me out. You, you know no, what I'm weren't worried, weren't scared. Nah, bro. I mean, come on. Look, uh, at the time, and 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 that's. I guess that's why the military kind of like worked out for me because I didn't give a shit about nothing. It don't matter. Right. Like I'm. I'm right. ready to go. You know what okay. I'm saying. So everything, and I was progressing so fast. That, like once I got in. It was pretty much the same mindset. So I was progressing so fast, bro. If you look look at my rank, I was a staff sergeant, bro. I wasn't even in four or five years, barely five years in at the time. And I was a staff staff sergeant already, bro. Wow. So explain to us, 17-year-old kid from Brooklyn. You signed up and you finally get there. Walk us through it. Paint us the picture. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, obviously, I had I had a like an issue with rules and shit, you know. Right. Like, you know, my pops, you know, I didn't want to. I wanted to do my own thing. Right. <laughs> but obviously, you can't you can't do your own thing in the in, in the military in the army and shit, you know. But my first day, let me tell you, like my first, like it was cool. Maybe the first week because you know you, you're doing the paperwork, the processing or whatever. So you're in the MEP, they call it the MEP station, where you just go in and do all, like, the in-process and shit, you know what I'm saying? And then when they ship you, they ship you downrange, that's basically, like, the actual boot camp. Bro, when I tell you, <laughs> yeah, let's put it like this, man. They they was whooping and cooking my ass so hard, bro, <laughs> I, I was crying. Yo, let me tell you something, I, I cried, like, I, and I'm... 
bro, I, normally as a child, like growing up, I, I could, I could literally like when I was a baby. Of course, I was crying, but I hardly ever cry because it's looked down, it looked looked down upon. Like, man, stop crying and get your ass up. You know what I'm saying? So I never, but that 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 in boot camp, yo, they was on my ass, yo. I cried. I remember my mom showed me the letter not too long ago, man. She said because I wrote her like a letter, nigga. I was crying, part of my language, <laughs> but I was fucking crying, man. You know what I mean? Like I wanted to go home, bro, but it's too now, late. You already you already locked in, you know. Is it true, the myth? There's a myth that goes out there. They always say it. If you say you're from New York, they give it to you harder. Is that true? Definitely. Definitely. Why? Every, I don't know. I, I don't get it, bro. I really don't understand it. And 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 it's not just it's not just the workers. I'm talking about not not just the uh the drill sergeants or whatever. Like it's everybody in general. Oh they it's like, I don't know, I think it's, it maybe it's like an inferiority complex or something like, oh, you think you're from New York, you think you're all that, or something like that, I don't know. But, bro, they would, they had me, do, let me put it like this, the most push-ups I could do before, before I went in was probably like maybe 20, and I thought that was a lot, and, you know, and by the time I finished boot camp, like, I, I got high PT, um, score that bro in two minutes I was doing like a hundred and change like hundred and ten. That was a high PT and it, that was the most because I they was they used to be on me everything push ups oh you lost it this oh push ups oh private camera oh push ups oh bro they used to fuck me up man I never forget that like I was like yeah I don't want to go home son but if I if I could run home or like escape I probably would but I didn't even know where the fuck I was at. You know, right, I, right, right. So I was like, oh, I just gotta deal with this shit, and they would tear my ass up tenfold, like more than anybody else. So <laughs> now you, you're going through it, right? You're going through it at the time when you enlisted. Was the actual war in place overseas? Nah, it was right before that. So basically, it's, it's, you didn't, you didn't even know what was was. You didn't uh, even know the storm that was coming at all. Um, you know, like I said, it, it was. It was mid-99, like, I signed up, but, like, got shipped off, like, closer towards the end of the year. So, like, 2000 is, like, literally when I was done the training and got stationed in Fort Hood. I didn't know that all of this, you know, the 9-11 and all this shit was going to happen. Uh, we were doing deployments. And, matter of fact, for 9-11, I had just got back from Kuwait. Like, literally, and I drove from Texas all the way up, which is, uh, I, <sighs> hell. And, um... I was here for 9-11. I was actually sleeping. I think it was like maybe, a, it's like the middle of the week. So maybe it was like a Wednesday morning, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Like it was the middle of the week because I remember I was going to drive back to Texas. And my pops came in the house like, hey, did somebody bombed up, bombed the Twin Towers. I'm like, man, get the fuck out of here. You wake me up for this shit? And then the second plane hit. I was like, oh, shit. You know, everything changed. And, and ever since that, like everything just changed. Like everything everything changed how how old the military you? Uh, how old were you around? um that that's old one so 19 so at 19 about to be about to be but yeah about to be because yeah because my birthday is in october so yeah roughly yeah so at 19 years old you see the towers come down yeah and when do you say to yourself like oh shit it's going down bro honestly I was just paying attention to the news because, I mean, nobody knew. And and basically, the problem is, like, we're paying attention to the news and we're getting everything, like, all the information. So, like, I didn't know. I was like, we just had an alert. And, and um somebody from, from Fort Hood called me and said, hey, you got to come back. You got to come back. You know, uh, we, had a, we had an alert. Some. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I was like, all right. I hopped in the car and I, and I drove back, but it really didn't hit me until I got back and see like all the, you know, the barricades and the security and everything was different. Like now you got to show ID and back then you just drive on and drive off. But now everything is different. Like the alert, everything, the dogs, everything is out. Everything since then, like everything changed and it never went back. It, like it was, it's never been the same since, you know? Right. Like it, everything, the security measure, everything is like elevated since then, you know? So, so let me ask you a question. At 19 years old, you see the towers come down. You see the, the, the high level of security. Were you scared? 
Nah, I was ready. You was ready. Believe like, like the, your general, ready. Was your, your general was pumping. You was ready to to defend your country. Yeah, because I, I, you know, at the time, you know, like I had faith in, I guess, the training and and the people in charge, like uh, right, um, like my sergeants and, and stuff like that. Because a lot a lot of those guys went to Desert Storm, so okay. you know they have the experience. So I'm like, all right, let's let, let's go do this. And I was volunteering for that's why I got promoted so fast because I was volunteering for everything. You know, I mean, send me, let me do this, let me do that. So. I was going above and beyond and, and, and just getting um uh like promotion points and getting ready to, you know. Right. Hey, hey, you get promoted to specialist. Hey, you get promoted to sergeant. Hey, you get promoted to staff sergeant because I was ready, bro. I, right. I put my and, – and, of course, when you're getting all the intel and I was – and I'm still glued to the news, but now it's a little bit different. Like now I had to like pull back a little bit, you know. Right. But I was like anything you hear on the news, I'm like, yeah, oh, they did this? I'm ready. Let's go. Now, I'm going to interrupt you for one second. Once mm -hmm. again, I want everybody to know that um, Sean Killer Cam, Cameron yeah. has um, decided that he wants um, donations to go to the Wounded Warrior Project. So we tell yes, everybody, sir. everybody who watches this video, um, I know you're going to appreciate it. We're talking about an American hero right now. Like I yeah. said, and I'll always say it, we are mere mortals. That's the hero. <laughs> That's the gladiator. You know what I mean? Um, whatever religion you believe in, you pray to that God. But the, <laughs> the closest thing to touch a God is the man you're speaking to right now. And, and I stress to you, it doesn't matter how much. Today, I gave $50, okay? Which oh, is nothing, wow. nothing, nothing. Nothing, nah, bro. That's you, a you, lot, man. You could you could check it on face, on. Facebook. Or you could check it on Facebook. You could check it on Instagram. Right. And um, Wounded Warrior gives you the option. You know, you could give the money in honor of somebody. And and I did it in honor of Sean Cameron. You know, wow. and uh, I want to appreciate wow, you for your bro. service. And I got to interrupt you because we're gonna keep going. But I I gotta. You know what? You gotta get your flowers now. You gotta get your flowers oh, now. Man. And uh, you know, Yo, I'm gonna I promise you, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't, I definitely didn't expect this, bro. I, wow, I don't even have words, man. I appreciate it. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure the people they appreciate it too, but you know, wow, I, <laughs> I don't listen, even know what the fuck to say. Dog. Listen, listen, in, in pirate boxing, man, we are we are big, we are big in, in um, you know, with, with our military veterans. You know, we're, we're big on law enforcement. And I'm going to tell you something, Sean. I'm going to tell you something. I was born, I was born in the Dominican Republic. You know what I'm saying? I was born in the Dominican Republic. Ah, and, kill again. And, sorry. and I want you to understand one thing, man. You're the reason people like you who defended this country, who make this country great, you're the reason why my parents chose to come here. You know what I'm saying? Bro, okay. Let, pause. Let's go back. Right, because I was born in Jamaica, the country, not Jamaica Queens, correct the country. Right, you know I'm saying my family, my family have been moving all over. Like my grandparents are from Cuba; mm -hmm. they moved to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Right, um, I was born there, and I grew up in Brooklyn. I moved to Brooklyn when I was a kid, a baby, and um, so, and majority of the people in in the military at the time, especially in the army. Are fucking immigrants, dog. Yeah, you understand. Yeah, and people right. from other countries, we just come into America to, I guess, for for opportunity. You know what I mean? So that's that's basically it. most of my friends that that, and I still keep up, like especially on Facebook and stuff like that. Most of these guys, they're from other countries, or their right. parents are from other countries and stuff. So, you know what I'm saying? Like they come here for opportunities, and they come here to work, work hard, and just make a better life for themselves. And right. You know, I'm no different. You know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. Let's not get it twisted. You are different. You, you are extremely <laughs> different. No, 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 no. We're going to keep it. We're going to keep it 100. We're going to keep it a buck. You know what I'm saying? Um, You know what? Like I said, we don't do drugs at Pirate Boxing, but my friend, you got us smoking. Smoking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got the smoke machine, you know? And you're going to see a little bit of mist of the smoke, you know? Um, But like I said, we're, we're, we're going to continue now. Don't forget... Wounded Warrior Project. I cannot stress that. Definitely. Wounded Warrior Project. We do not care how much. Give. 
give, give. Here at Pirate Boxing, we are not takers. We are givers. We believe in giving back. This man is a true a gladiator, man. True gladiator. And I want you to understand, you'll always have a home here. Whenever you want to come on, we appreciate you. Whoever you want to come on, you can just tell them to slide through because this isn't about me. This is about you, you know, and this is about the boxing community, um, <laughs> you know, but we're going to continue. So now, um, high level of alert, you're 19 years old. Once the towers came down, how long into you already like on that plane getting ready to ship out? Uh, it was, it was a while. Um, cause I had to drive back to Fort Hood, but what, oh, okay. so Fort Hood, I don't know if you ever heard of it, but it's like damn near like one of the biggest army bases. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's in the middle of Texas, like right in the middle, Colleen, Texas. Um, you know, I drove, and when I'm driving from New York to to freaking Colleen, like I don't even stop. The only time I stop is for gas, really. And uh, by the time I got there, it was like a like a day, more than a day. Okay. Literally, like nonstop. So it's like twenty something hours, almost like thirty. Um. Then we get there, and, and I didn't get to deploy with them at, at Fort Hood. I got sent. I got sent to um, Korea at first, but like everybody, like they were all deploying, and I'm, bro, I'm trying to go. Like I'm trying to get some action. You know, I'm volunteering for everything because I'm a kid. I'm stupid, you know. I, you know, sometimes like, like you really don't know, like danger. Like you know what I'm saying, like. Like, let's say motherfuckers are getting killed. Like, I don't know. I want to go out there and see it, which probably is not the smartest thing to do. <laughs> but I was trying to, like, I was trying to, like, volunteer, and I got sent to um, uh, Korea, and I was in um, um infantry company. It's not until I got into, like, an infantry company, more combat arms um, uh, companies, th those guys were, like, rep uh, deploying rapidly, and that's how I ended up, you know, going getting deployed so it it was it was more than a year because that happened in 01 and because i did two deployments like my my the first one was like like oh two and then the other one was oh four you know right so 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 now you get deployed and now you're in the mix of it paint us that picture it, okay so it was a lot of waiting. All right. So, all right. Well, you touch down, okay? Right. Ma majority of the time, like, most of the, most of it, like, the main thing is, like, just anticipation. Like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? And then you touch down. Um, at the time, I was a specialist, my rank, right? So, um, I, like, I wasn't high on the totem pole. I wasn't getting, like, a lot of info. We just get orders and execute. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, um, so majority of the time it was mainly guard duty. Like we 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 get we do a lot of convoys from point A to point B. Um, my my job, NBC, like I told you guys, uh, uh, nuclear, biological, chemical specialist. So we're supposed to look for weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. And and. Like, that's basically, we're supposed to be the subject matter expert of that. If we get attacked, then we are the one who do the, the, the decontamination mission or we plot the, the routes and whatever the fuck. Anything when it comes to chemical weapons, we're just basically the ones who do, who execute and get everybody uh, to maneuver safely. But a lot of it was just mainly like convoy and briefings. This okay. happened today. That happened today. Tomorrow we got to do this. That X Y. It, it really wasn't much. It, it felt distant. It never really hit until like I lost my best friend. You know what I mean? Let's. Can we talk so, about that? Uh, uh, yeah, of course. So my my like my this guy was you know we were in the same same company in Fort Hood. So it's kind of like like when you go to high school, you know, y'all right. keep in touch. Like even though we left for it, hood, that's still my man. That's still my friend. And shit. We still call each other and what the hell, what's popping? How you doing? Whatever. I left Fort Hood and went to um, you know, the Manchus, and he went to uh Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Right. He got deployed and he kept getting. He got two deployments. He went back to uh Iraq, 
and um, I spoke to him maybe a couple of days before he got killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm about to go home, about to go see this, that, and the third. And then next, next thing I heard, man, he was guarding a bank in Mosul. This is in Iraq, right? He was guarding a bank, and um, and I think he got hit with the RPG, and that shit just broke me. You know what I'm how, saying? How did you find out about it, if I may ask? Uh, so like my my like what my a friend of mine, which was his girlfriend, like we were all remember it's kind of like like I said high school, so you know his girlfriend was like a real good friend of mine. We were all in the same company, so we're all friends. Right. And she called me crying. She's the one that actually called me crying and whatever. And I'm like, what? Whatever. And back then, we really didn't have the internet, all of that. You know, right. it's not like now we could just hop on Googling and whatever. So, um, you know, I was calling around, calling around. And um, yeah, uh, somebody from the unit confirmed. And bro, I was broken. Was that? I still think that, about him every day, man. Was that broken, the first bro. traumatic experience you ever uh, yeah. encountered in your life? Yeah. Um, I, w- I would say so. Like, of course you lose friends. Like, in the neighborhood, you heard somebody got shot or whatever. Right. And, but this, you know, this kind of hit different because, I mean, you know, you think about it, we, we were trying to just do better. We're kids. We're fucking kids. Uh, 2003, uh, I want to say he was, he was a little bit older. So maybe, like, he's 22, 23 at the time. And sh- you know, he's a fucking kid. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Getting you know, he's trying to do the right thing and boom. That's kinda like them cops that just got killed the other day, twenty two and twenty seven. You know what Correct. I'm saying? They're Correct. kids. Correct. They're kids, bro. Um may I trying ask trying to do name? the right thing. May I ask his name? His his Kenan, Morgan Kenan his name is from Memphis, Tennessee. I always post him on my Facebook and social media, you know? Right, I, I see and him. Just cause I yeah, I, I think about him like like a whole lot. But it's just it's just a matter of you know, like I said, a lot of that, a lot, a lot, most of the times, like, it doesn't re- mean shit until it hits home. And yeah. then everything just got real for me. You know what I mean? We get the brief- briefings all the time. This unit got attacked. That unit got ambushed, whatever. I'm like, okay, cool. All right. Okay, cool. It's expected. But then when right. it hits home, it's a little bit different, man. Hit different, bro. Now, it would be safe to say that when you lost your best friend, it put you in a dark place? It definitely did. It, it it definitely did, bro. I cr- I, I'm saying I cried. That's the last time I remember crying, really. Right. For like, for I think for like a whole month straight, right. nonstop, just crying. Woke up and slept. Woke up, slept. Woke, just crying. You know what I mean? So, is it safe to say you did what you had to do to get back home? Well, yeah. I mean, you don't have well. You don't have a choice. You know what I'm saying? When you, right. when, when, like, getting back home, that's the mission. Correct. Regardless of what the mission is, but the goal is to get back home safely. You know what Correct. I mean? Correct. In one piece. And, and a lot of people get, get here physically in one piece, but your, your mental, you know, you're shattered. So, so, so yeah. you go through that, and now you're coming back home. How do you transition from the pain that you just went through to coming back home? <sighs> Bro, I don't even know, man. You just, I don't know. It's its because they don't prepare you for this shit, or, or, or at least I wasn't. You right. know, nobody tells you how to deal with this shit. You just come right. home and, and now you're home. And that's it. So basically... Um, so basically, it's just your home, and yeah. and, that, and that picture that they paint, counseling and all that stuff. It's maybe they do it now, right? But at the but back then it wasn't. All right, okay, all right, you're home. That's it. Boom. That's it. it it's kind of like you know, because it, it, there wasn't like a lot of uh, resources, or maybe we had it, but it wasn't something that was. Uh, I guess talked about, or you know, they did, they didn't give you much information. You know what I'm saying? Correct, correct. So correct. it's kind of like, uh, for example, um, disability. When you're getting out, a lot of people get disabled. But unless it's like a real disability, like you wouldn't know that maybe you might get some form of compensation. You know what I'm saying? And and, and almost everybody gets disabled over there or in the military in general, just period. Right. So, 
you wouldn't even know until it maybe years later the years later is really when i started claiming some form of disability like to get some form of compensation from the military you know what i'm saying years right. later this is i brought i got out the military in 2000 2005 or 6 and literally it was only like 2018 is really when i i uh, looked into it and started doing that shit. look now, how many look how many years later you know what i'm saying around how old are you at that time oh six uh oh six uh 24 or five or something like that yeah. 24 or five 24 or yeah. five so we're talking about a long time you were dealing with those demons yeah man even you know let me tell you and and of course the counseling and and, and that stuff really we didn't know about that the, the resources we didn't know um that's how i found boxing right right because right. I, I, I don't know. I just felt like I needed to do something. I just don't want to sit still. I don't, you know what I mean? Then your mind starts traveling and you start thinking about this and it, whatever. So, you know, um, I went I went on the computer, surprisingly, and I, right. and I looked up, like, boxing gyms, and I found Gleason's in Brooklyn. Now, obviously, you know, Gleason's, Brooklyn, boom, that's it. I'm going to go there, and that's when it all started for me, like, the whole boxing thing and it, it's basically and you can ask anybody um who was around at the time or even the the owners like i used to be in the gym like like i worked there like you know what i mean but i'm training for like eight hours a day and like why is he training so hard like what the hell is going on but nah it's it, it's it's it was a little bit more than just training man. it right. was just me try, i guess trying to get my mind right and shit man i did the golden gloves like i picked up boxing and then in, a few months later i'm in the golden gloves semifinals and, and won it the next year you know what i'm saying while well, you have guys who've been boxing for years who never even made it to the freaking quarterfinals and shit you know what I'm now saying? now most people don't understand the importance of the golden gloves um just winning the golden gloves in itself is like winning a world championship am i right or am i wrong I, I, right at the time people treated it like like the olympics bro no Correct. lie Correct. No lie. I mean, in, in Gleason's gym, it was packed. All you know, all the big fighters. Uh, Zab was there. Zab and all his brothers. Uh, Malinaji, Paulie Malinaji was there. You know what I mean? Um, Yuri Foreman. You know what I'm saying? Correct. Uh, like all, all like a lot of champions. Vivian Harris, uh, Braithwaite. Like a lot of like champions. Mark Breland used to come in there and train the people and stuff like that. I mean, I, I, he's still probably go over there, but just a lot of guys. And, but when it's golden glove time, and just to have that little chain, very big. You know what I'm saying? It's very right. big. So when you it's win that, big. like, cause you don't, you can't buy those. No, you gotta win those. You know what I'm Correct. saying? So, Correct. so, so, everybody. Oh man, I want that. I want that. And people used to train, and uh, there, were, bro, there's guys that that did the the golden gloves four, five, six, seven years. It still ain't get one. Like it's people like those were at the time, especially right around that oh eight, oh nine, ten. Correct. And, and then of course, you know, uh, if you get a good fight, then they put it in the daily news, and then you on the MSG network and stuff. Like, it was big, bro. Right. It's right. not like that now. I don't know what happened, why it fizzled out, but at the time it was fucking huge, man. Now, now before I ask you a very important question, I want to touch. I want to touch on the Golden Gloves. Me uh -huh. personally, me personally, because. I'm going to have to say 99.99999% of the time when there's a Golden Gloves champion, they always wear their chain outside. Always. It's Definitely. Always, right away. They wrong. always do because they're, they're, they're proud. They want, you, they want you to know what it is. Like, yo, me. So, That's right. Because when you see it, you'll be like, oh, shit, you won the gloves? That's uh, right. What year? When? And then, of course, yes. it's a... Um, what right, year? It's Right. It's, a, it's um, engraved in, 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 uh, on the back of the glove. So you can see, oh, shit. Yes. Oh, congrats, man. Oh, that's big. You know what I mean? And, th and then they yeah, actually, the yeah, other yeah. most important question, the other the other big question, they actually, the year, and then the other yeah. big question is, novice or open? Ah, uh, that's a, oh, yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that was, that was, that, that was definitely, um, this, the next question or like, yeah. oh, word, then, then what happened? Yeah. Then they, they want to know, you know, because that, that opens the door to like all the other boxing questions that, that comes next. You know what I'm saying? Now, so now, that funny, man. Now, question, a very important question. How did boxing help you with um, PTSD? Bro, it helped me. Let me tell you, if it wasn't, if it wasn't for, 
if it wasn't for boxing, bro, at the time especially, there's no telling what the fuck would have happened or what I would have been doing. Or maybe I probably would have ended up doing some shit that would have got me in some trouble or something because it was right. just, it was the training that I did was, and at the time I didn't have a job. So it was just all training. I'm telling you, I'm training for like damn near eight hours every fucking day. Correct. You know what I'm saying? But it's mainly just, it's just in my head. I'm like, yo, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, because I felt that's the only time I really felt good when I was releasing all the energy that I have or like it took my mind off of whatever else I had going on. You know what I'm saying? Correct. Correct. You correct. know, uh, one thing that I need to touch upon is, you know, most of the public really doesn't realize um, the effects that, you know, are hurting our veterans. There's a lot of veterans. There's a huge number oh, that are man. homeless, um, that, that are addicted to drugs because they don't, they don't have an outlet and they don't have the help. And exactly. And for whatever reason, I don't know why, but that's, you know, usually kept on the hush. Well, a part of the reason is, uh, like I said a little bit before, is that um, uh, is that the information, they don't have to, when it's time to get out, you just turn your, uh, your equipment in. So there, there's a thing called ACAP. Right. Uh, I forgot what it stands for. Well, basically, they prepare you for the civilian world, but you know, it, they don't spend enough time to, you know, tell you about the resources and what you can and can't do and where to go for this, that, and whatever. So a lot of the times when they're done, it's done. That's it. See you later. Right. And now these guys are lost. Physically right. and mentally, they're just lost. You know what I mean? They don't know where to go, or what to do, and how to get a job, or how to do this, or how to, you know what I mean? And then they're just they're fucking broke. Unless you stay in for 20 years and retire or whatever, you, you just, that's it. Have a nice day. Thank, thanks, thank you for your service, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, a, a lot of that is just the information that they don't have. They don't know. Right. Do you regret it? Do I regret what? Um, the serving service. your sir, yeah. Nah. I don't. Okay. Uh, people ask me this all the time, and um, I don't regret serving. Would I do it again? Nah. But I'm happy I did it. Right. You understand? Right. Because, I mean, it gave me some structure. Okay. It kind of like, it basically, like, it made me, it showed me how tough I am, basically. You know what I'm saying? Like, now, if you could deal with that, whatever comes next, all right, no problem. Right. Any any form of adversity is like, okay, I could deal with this shit because you've been through a lot of stress before, whether it's combat stress or whatever. So anything else is like, whatever. You know, it, okay. it is what it is. So, All right. how, but, but I mean, would I do it? Would I do it again? Nah, but I'm happy I did though, because of, of who I am now. You know what I'm saying? Correct. Correct. Right. Um, we have to take a, a, a quick break. You're with us, but we have yeah, to take yeah. a, a quick break. <laughs> once again, right, no once again, I want everybody to know Sean, Killer Cam, Cameron, has chosen the Wounded Warrior <laughs> Project. Please, Definitely. Please, if you um, respect the service that he has provided for our great country, if you are enjoying this interview, can you please, please, I did it. I did it on behalf of his name, you know. Um, please donate. Please donate. There, there's a lot of uh, servicemen that they need help. You know, they need help. Uh, and, um, you know, it's nice to see that um, commercial and say to yourself, hey, man, you know, I'll give. And then all of a sudden, right, you, know, right, right. you leave your house, you leave your house and you and forget. that's it. Today, exactly. today, we have a military hero right here. We're speaking to him. He's talking to us about his trials and his tribulations and everything he went through. Let's go out there. Let's open up our wallets. You know what oh. I'm saying? Let's open up our wallets. And we're not asking you. I'm not asking you for a lot. Five dollars. Nah, any, five anything, dollars. Bro. Anything, five dollars. A dollar, two, five, ten, whatever. It yes. doesn't matter. And and matter. you know, you know what? Liz, why don't we do this? If you have a family member or somebody that you know, put it in their honor. But I would like to ask if you could just do me a favor. Put anybody you want, just take the letter K. Slash it, put the letter C. That way we know 
that we made a difference. That Sean, that Sean came on here today and gave us his time, his time for whatever he may be doing. Because right now he could have been doing, he, Tom, Tom is very valuable. Tom is very valuable. And he took time to come and talk to us. So let's pay, let, let's, let's pay forward. Once again, Wounded Warrior Project, please donate. I did it today. I've I've seen these commercials. I'm 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 49 years old. I've seen these commercials all my life. Today is the first time that I've ever donated, and I donated for a worthy cause, and that cause is Killer Cam. Sean, Perfect, bro, Much Cam, appreciate it, um, uh, bro. Appreciate it. We Much we appreciate it. We, we we spoke um a lot about your early life. We spoke about the military life. Um, they're telling me, you know, uh, to wrap it up, we don't have enough time to talk about, uh, we don't have enough time to talk about your boxing life because you got to understand something. You know what? Superman's life can't be told <laughs> in 45 it minutes. Won. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Am I right or am I wrong? Right or wrong? If you sat yeah, Superman you down, it, if hey. you sat Superman down, can, can he tell you, can he wrap it up in 45 minutes? <laughs> nah, I'm pretty so, sure you can't, man. So, so I need you to come back. You think you could do that for us? Whenever. Just you already know. Just send me the you know, send me whatever and you reach out and it's cause we gotta know. get part two. We gotta get part we, two. We still gotta talk about, you know, somebody that's very close to your heart, uh, very, man. very close to the boxing community, uh a, a hero. Um, you look at most of the boxing memorabilia I have, it has his name on it. You know, any yeah. any boxing equipment that I have, it has his name on it. And um, you know, we're talking about a fine gentleman that we lost in the ring by the name of Patrick Day. And um, I need you to come back and, you know, I need you to talk um, about Patrick. So his, mm. so his, his, his legacy could continue. Um, mm. And I want to know, you know, your experiences in boxing and, you know, just, just talking about Patrick in itself is going to take a lot of time. Am I, am I, am I lying? Uh, yo, you know what? Yeah, you definitely, because, Man, that that's a show in itself. You know what I'm saying? Correct. That's a show in itself. And, and we're working on that. Guy, man. We're working on that. All right, definitely. So, definitely. so anytime, man. Just shoot me the link, and, and we, we have to, to we have to do hurt. we have to do the we have to do this uh, the second part once again. Killer Cam, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your service. In, in my <laughs> eyes, and and in the eyes of most people, you are a superhero. Once again, I'll always say it. We are mere mortals. You are the gladiator. Blessings to you. And uh, I know I can't wait for the second part. And I know everybody else can't wait either. Once again, Wounded Warrior Project. Please donate. Wounded Definitely. Warrior Project. Thank That's you for your time. It. Thank you. Okay, Thanks bro. for having me, bro. Oh, appreciate no, trust you guys, me. man. Trust me. This will be your home. Captain Chaos, <laughs> Pirate Boxing, Deuces. I'm out. All right, take care, bro.